In this episode of The View, I'm with Steve Whitkoff, the founder of the Whitkoff Group, one of the most active residential developers in the city right now. Steve, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. The Domino Sugar Factory and the deal that the developers there, Two Trees, came to with the new administration, Mayor de Blasio. Have you been following that and what do you think of the deal? Probably something I would have done. That, that's why I, you know, it resonates with me because I think I would have probably handled it in much the same way that Two Trace did. Critics of it, they sort of feel that the rules of the game are being changed, and yet it didn't sound to me like they added all that much affordable to the uh, to the Domino uh, Sugar Factory deal. I don't see where that's a problem. Now you're out buying residential sites for your your own portfolio and your own development pipeline. Some people do say in the real estate community that Two Trees got Domino at the bottom of the market or, or when it was still a recovering market, they got a great deal, and that the math that is being set there is favorable for them because they didn't pay a lot for that development site. They paid $180 million. There's a recent report that that site now could be worth $300 million. So for the developers today who, who are having to deal with the market today, does that make sense? Hopefully that point is being made to the mayor. Because the fact is, it doesn't make sense. The fact is that at $300 million, I would imagine, with interest rates going up, with cost of capital going up, with the cost of equity going up. They couldn't strike the same deal. That's exactly correct. The recent news about it is that now union labor is moving in, the construction labor, saying, we want to build this project and we want it mandated. What do you think about that? And what is the status of union labor on construction projects in the city? I think a lot of times what happens is that the unions make concessions, and those concessions don't end up at the with the developer because the subcontractors take a lot of those concessions and it doesn't flow through. So I think if you're going to create a system where the government says, uh, if, if, if we're going to change the zoning and we're going to make this affordable, you have to be union, you know, I don't know. I mean, that might, that, that's a difficult equation. Do you build non-union? We've renovated with non-union labor. But when you're really doing a very complicated construction job with foundation and superstructure, you, you need the skill set that generally comes with union contractors, those union subs who do that level of work. What would make you say, on this job, I'm going to go non-union? There would have to be such a huge disparity between union labor bids and non-union labor and bids. And we're not there yet? Yeah, I think the savings to be made. but. I don't think that disparity exists, and even if that disparity does, it, even if it's if it's a wide gulf, you still it, you'd still have to be able to find the skill set within a non-union labor field, and I'm not sure in a, in a lot of these subcontracts that that skill set exists. 